Colleagues, let's move on to the next presentation by Department of um, Environment, Forestry and Fisheries. And I think I always get it wrong. The Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment. And that is going to be presented by Mr. Abenego Jacob. And uh, I'm just looking for his. Yeah. So Mr. Baker is a senior technical specialist that is risk assessment responsible for health impact assessment within the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment. He is an environmental health practitioner by profession and his highest qualification is Masters of Public Health from the University of Pretoria. He also obtained an advanced certificate in epidemiology from the University of Dundee, Scotland, before joining the DFFE. He worked at the National Department of Health, was on the Department of Health, Northern Cape Department of Health, and the National Institute of Occupational Health. Uh, he's also a uh, very important and active member of the National One Health Forum and One Health Steering Committee. So over to you, Mr. Baker. Thanks, Wayne. Um, good morning, colleagues. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Thank you so very much. Um, my approach will be um, uh, discussing what uh, the, our department is doing with regards to One Health. Okay, I'm trying to move the slides here. It's on strike. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, my outline it will be my presentation outline will be introducing introducing the subject and basically and basically looking at um, the one health approach in our department department, but focusing on our branches that are in, involved, and I'll look at chemicals and waste and waste management, which is one of our branch, climate change and equalities, another branch, biodiversity and conversation, and then fisheries management. So these are the some of the uh, branches that are involved in One Health directly. Now, if you look at, at our leg legislation, um, the National Environmental Management Act, its preamble, it's actually um, acknowledged the fact that uh, um, the, the, the people are not living in uh, the environment that is harmful to their well-being, like required by the Constitution. But uh, the the, the, the act is actually saying that they we need to uh, to do something about it there need to be a, re a reasonable legislation and other measures taken to ensure that people live in an environment that is not harmful to their health and well-being and this um, suggests is suggested by uh, uh, ensuring uh, the prevention uh, of pollution and ecological uh, degradation and the promotion of conservation and, and securing ecology sustainable development and the use of natural resources while promoting justifiable economic and social development. So um, this is the approach of the department in ensuring um, that um, the environment is safe um, um, and uh, 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 their well-being is, is also uh, uh, considered. Now, the department recognized the significance of um, one health in that, uh, we, the, we there's there's a direct link uh, between environmental management, especially with regards to human health and environmental impact. Now, we we also rec recognize the fact that um, one health is significant, um, especially with regard to su sustainable uh, balance and optimizing the health of the people and an animals and an ecosystem. We, we also recognize that uh, human, uh, human, human and animal health and environment are, are interlinked or interdependent. And um, so it, from, for, uh, from our side, it's very important that um, we do um, um, uh, uh, ensure um, one health uh, approach in that we, especially with regard to information sharing, um, with, which will result in um, the, our ability to manage the environment. 
So, like I said, we got some branches that are involved in the um, uh, One Health approach, uh, which includes the chemical and waste management, biodiversity and conserv conservation, uh, fisheries management, uh, air quality management, um, and uh, climate change as well. Um, so these are the uh, these are the uh, the branches within the department that are um, involved in the uh, One Health approach. Now the first one it's the chemical and waste management. Now for the involvement of chemical and waste management, because their main their main uh, uh, um, objective is to control pollution. Um, but currently they they are involved in. Um, um, uh, directly uh, in carcass management, uh, especially during a uh, zoonotic uh, um, disease out outbreak. And currently we're developing the uh, regulations. Uh, initially we wanted to develop the guidelines, but uh, they um, um, decided to develop the regulations which will go a long way, especially with regards to managing the, the, the man managing the disposal. So now they are looking at various uh, treatment options and that includes the composting and this is um, a very critical one because yeah while while you use uh, uh, animals for composting you need to ensure that you are not not uh, impacting on the environment because this is uh, some kind of a tricky one uh, especially with regards to uh, in the fact that we're dealing with inf in uh, infectious uh, i mean uh, uh, carcasses that uh, uh, th that have been exposed to communicable diseases uh, we need to actually look into the fact that we don't uh, 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 um, uh, 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 infect, a uh, further infect the environment in that we we affect underground water and so on. And uh, so the the other as okay, what is important as well is that they they will be involving key stakeholders in the in the field like agriculture and health, especially with regard when they are developing this and. Uh, I've been tasked actually to look for uh, relevant stakeholders that, um, um, especially from One Health, that can be involved. Another aspect is of waste burning. Um, as a result, as, as you know, that um, in the country, more, most of municipalities uh, have got a problem, a challenge, especially with regards to uh, waste management. So people result in the combustion of uh, waste, uh, which impact the environment directly. And uh, during combustion, you re uh, significant um, pollutants uh, like heavy metals um, released into the air, um, uh, some landing into the soil and um, taken to the rivers, um, we end up ending up in the rivers and uh, affecting aquatic animals. Um, we also have uh, a challenge with regards to illegal dumping or dump sites and tire burning. Um, and this all this this uh, negatively affect the environment. Now, if you look at the One Health approach, I think primarily it deals with communicable disease. Um, I I I wanted to actually I I, I looked at the definition and the and the and the what to call the 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 whole aspect of One Health and and yeah and and there's no mention of non communicable diseases, but unfortunately, I think. Uh, this maybe this needs to be revisited because we we do have um, um, non communicable diseases that are, are affecting uh, uh, animals, especially if you look at the issue the, the issue that I've talked about, the combustion of um, uh, anthropogenic uh, um, uh, fuels like um, coal and so on. So it really it releases, like I said. Um, uh, significant pollutants like mercury that ends up uh, uh, in aquatic uh, environments, and um, and that uh, and you will get that uh, especially animals that we um, are food for for us like fish and so on. Uh, they result in high level of mercury and so on. So we in that way we get infected. So I'm not sure whether we should really look at a definition and include non-communicable -commun uh, disease because from our side, um, that, that is a very critical area. Now, okay, the last bullet I've talked about is the, the heavy metals that are released from uh, um, combustion. Um, one other example regarding um, 
the release of um, pollutants um, from anthropogenic uh, uh, sources. Uh, it's uh, the challenge that we had, especially with the chemicals in um, Bumalanga, and um, uh, in that uh, we um, um, aquatic animals, especially in rivers around and uh, in under them, they were found to have a high level of mercury. Uh, the company has been, I think, it's closed down now, but it's, it's been operating for for a very long time. I think in the in the sixties, started in the in the sixties. So throughout the years, um, we find the environment being impacted by uh, the, 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 the 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 their processes. Now, other sources we find that um, there are um, facilities or industries that are operating close to farms and so on. And uh, like your petrochemical industries and uh, your power generation industries. Um, so if uh, at the end of the day, you find that um, um, the animals are, are um, affected. So we've got, a, so when we do um, environmental impact assessment, which is one of our, um, uh, of, of the activities that we do when we 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 allow industries to operate and also to monitor thereafter, we find high level of this pollutant um, uh, around. So when uh, so our legislation um, uh, requires that there need to be um, health impact assessment conducted, uh, especially to look into uh, human health and environment. And in terms of environment, we were looking at uh, plants and animals. So air pollution become a precursor for communicable disease in that um, high level of air pollution will result, will affect plants and uh, animals because that feeds on plants. And ultimately, um, the immune systems of animals get affected. And that um, uh, um, uh, uh, it's a um, condition for uh, disease, uh, for animals to contact disease easily. Uh, climate, climate change, still climate change man, uh, and air quality management. Uh, air pollution, um, okay, um, okay, I, I've mentioned that precursor. And climate change also, uh, it alters the, the habitat of animals. And so if you alter the habitat of animals, then you you, you present a, a situation wherein uh, the bio, biodiversity uh, is affected. It's uh, that's the removal or uh, destruction of biodiversity. And then that res results in the migration of animals, for example. And um, you, you will end up finding uh, diseases, especially communicable diseases, where normally you, you won't uh, because of the migration of uh, animals. Now for the biodiversity and conservation uh, uh, branch, they are also involved in the, the One Health approach. Um, as you know, biodiversity is very, very critical, especially in uh, the provision of the um, the uh, provision of good and services. Um, uh, in that include the food and, and so on. So when you disrupt the biodiversity, then you get you run it, we run into problems. Um, we also like uh, uh, have a situation wherein when biodiversity is disrupted or removed, then we have we create a, a, um, an environment for, for uh, sources of pathogens that leads to ne uh, negative health outcomes. Now, drivers of uh, uh, direct drivers of uh, bi uh, biodiversity loss include land use change and habitat change, and that, like I mentioned, that if you change the you change or lose the the habitat of animals, then you you're creating a situation wherein uh, there will be um, a, a a problem with regards to the balance um, of the eco in, a, in the ecosystem, and also over ex ex uh, ex exploitation especially within in the mining industry where you have um, um, over exploitation of minerals and so on that disrupts also the the, the the ecosystem and then pollution I talked about invasive species as well and then climate change that I talked about. So now in recognizing the multi uh, faceted nature of the linkages between biodiversity and health, 
the Conference of Parties um, of the Convention of the Biological Diversity has established the joint working programs uh, aiming at achieving human health objectives and uh, like uh, controlling um, a, a, a situation wherein um, uh, which will result in the loss of biodiversity. There are programs that are um, uh, uh, planned by the CBD and um, through the One Health approach. Um, there are um, uh, 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 documents or uh, that 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 um, are being developed to guide to to, to provide uh, uh, the guidance with regards to this matter. Now we also are in the process of uh, developing the white paper for conversation and, and sustainable uh, use of uh, the South Africa's uh, biodiversity through the, the this uh, um, uh, coming Montreal Global Diversity Framework. So we are part of that uh, 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 what uh, engagement. So we'll be developing the white paper in that regard. So some of the activities, uh, DFF activities, it um, will include the national focal uh, as 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 we are the national focal point of um, uh, biodiversity because biodiversity is a, it's a, it's a critical one actually in our department. It it um, it's 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 most of the it's it's, it's one of the most um, a, 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 a branches where uh, every a, all other branches link, uh, are linked into it. And like I said, if uh, the biodiversity is disturbed, then we we run into problems. And um, so, um, like I said, we we the DFEV coordinates the national uh, implementation uh, uh, of the CBD decision as we agreed, and um, that includes the 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 the, um, the 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 implementation of the program through the one health um, uh, 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 what do you call approach. Um, I'm please, Mr. Baker. Excuse me. Hello. Please. Um, the, the time is limited. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah. So, so we we are involved, like I said, in the okay. In the nutshell, I think we're involved in the CBD um, uh, program. And uh, the last one would be for me the fisheries that I've, the fisheries management that I've talked about um, uh, with regards to and it emanates from the um, air pollution as well the pollution of um, oceans that results in um, uh, the loss of uh, food web and impacting animals and human health. Thanks.